Buongiorno tutti. Welcome uh, to my kitchen in Palermo, Sicily, Italy. Um, it is raining outside. I can't really go anywhere. Um, so I thought uh, for today's video I would um, show you how to use one of these things. <laughs> this is, um, I've heard it called a mocha machine, a mocha pot. Uh, but around here they seem to just call it an espresso machine or a, an, an espresso maker because that's what it does. comes in three pieces, the top, the bottom, and this is where you hold your coffee, right? And what's fascinating about this device is it's apparently a really, really old design, like 1800s, early 1900s, and it's all based on a vacuum. So you put the hot water in here, you heat it up on the stove, and this whole thing will seal together. The heat will push the water up and through the coffee in this little filter thing and make you a very, very strong uh, cup of coffee, intended to be an espresso. So this one is about a this size. Is about a it's about a double espresso. They have tiny tiny ones and much bigger ones as well. Um, but of course, I had to research how to how to use one of these things because I wasn't absolutely certain um, based on the reading that I, I I did before my trip. I wasn't actually certain that there'd be a coffee machine or I'd have to use one of these. But I got excited. I thought it was really cool. It took me a little while to figure out. So I did a lot of reading. I watched a few videos, tried to figure out what this is. So this video isn't going to be your perfect uh, mocha pot, um, but it's going to be based on what I've learned over the last two and a half weeks uh, of trying to make this coffee every day. And I'll tell you this right now, it seemed very foreign at first, <laughs> um, and then eventually it was like, oh yeah, I got this. And then it's, I suddenly lost the hang of it and then got it back. So ideally, I still have my mocha mojo, um, so I'll be able to do this. So a couple of things before we start is um, you want to make sure that this is nice and clean. Um, some of them that you, you might get, uh, I heard a rumor that some people like leave this all grungy because they, they think it's going to, you know, the old coffee is going to make the new coffee better, but that doesn't sound like a good idea at all. Um, and yeah, you want everything nice and clean. What's interesting is you can use this right on the stove top, right? Fill the water up, start it on the stove top, but it makes better sense um, to actually preheat your water, which is what I'm going to do right now using this kettle. Um, and the reason why we're going to do that is because because this goes on the stove you want to use the the heat to apply pressure to create a vacuum so it pushes the coffee through but you don't want to boil it so while the water is boiling i'm going to put some coffee in here and you use a good amount of coffee uh, this is some local stuff that i found very good and you basically want to fill this up i found you don't have to fill it quite up to the top to get a strong cup of coffee, but if you know you want to do that, go ahead. And so yeah, I would do about this much. You know, it's full. There's a little bit of space, um, but you don't want not. It's not a. It's not a cappuccino maker. You don't push it down or tamp it down or anything like that. You just want a nice level. But the thing is, because it works on a vacuum, what you really want to be sensitive about is uh, making sure that there's nothing like no little grains are at the top um, that are going to create a little bit of a hole in the seal. So it sounds like my water's ready. Um, so I'm actually going to awkwardly just put that in there for a second. Um, I'm going to take my hot water and you just want to fill it right up to the bottom of the safety valve. 
with your hot pre-hot heated hot water. Okay? And then, like I said, your uh, coffee just sits right on top there. Now, there's a little bit of a rubber washer here and then a bit of a filter. Uh, so when you clean this afterwards, you want to make sure that this is um, uh, completely clean, but that this rubber band, this rubber um, stopper, is nice and flush, like not uh, moving about or you know, coming out and everything, because again, it relies on the fact that it's sealed. The other thing you have to remember is if you use the hot water, this is hot now. <laughs> Take it from me. You know, use a uh, so yeah, it just twists on on top or twists into shape. Um, but you do want it a little tight. I mean, you don't want to crank it so you can't turn it anymore. But you do, I found it works a lot better um, if you, you know, give it a good squeeze. Because again, it relies on a vacuum, which relies on things being nice and tight. So, that said, that's when you put it on the burner. So. You want your flame, I mean, you can turn it on as high as you like, but anything bigger than the actual pot is just going to burn the side of the, the handle and it's going to be hot to the touch. So while this heats up, um, and again it shouldn't take as long because we preheated the water with the kettle, um, what you're waiting for is the sound of it gurgling. So what's happening now is that it's um, you know it's heating up, uh, the water is getting a lot of pressure, and then it's going to start to push itself up, and then the momentum of the vacuum is going to just bring all the water up until the upper chamber, and you're good to go. If you didn't get a good seal, you didn't tighten it well enough, sometimes water will, will leak out the sides here a little bit, and it'll just kind of bubble out. Um, I, that's kind of how I noticed that when I was doing it, poorly in the beginning, I hadn't tightened it, um, well, tight enough, um, so the seal wasn't there, the vacuum wasn't there, and so, you know, I was getting a little bit of coffee, I had to, I had to let it uh, sit on the stove a lot longer, push the heat through and all that kind of stuff, so ideally, just tighten it, not, you know, so you can't get it uh, loose or anything like that, but, so now, now we just wait a few minutes and we listen for it. The other thing I'll, I'll mention is that you don't need to take this lid up to check for it. Oh, listen, it's already going. So I hear it gurgling and I'm just going to turn the heat off because the momentum's happening, right? You don't need to take the lid off. It'll, it's gurgling and bubbling and boiling. <laughs> so all you're going to do with that is, is make a mess. So you just kind of have to be patient. Um, let it settle down and do its thing and then you can lift the lid to check to see whether it's done its job but I know it has and yeah you'll see now it's just full of coffee and here it is so this will make um, like I said two espressos um, I just recently found the espresso cup so I've, I've just been using this latte cup um, but you want a double espresso? This one does leak a little bit. There you go, double espresso. It smells wonderful. Mm. And it's strong, it's strong. That's the whole point of this process, right? Really pushes the water through there. Um, now, of course, like I said, you can have two espressos, you can have a double espresso, or if you like drinking your coffee or you're a North American, Americano. Just like that. What you won't get from me is instructions on how to froth the milk or how much sugar to add because I don't, you know, 
I, I still maintain that um, I can't imagine um, doing anything worse to a good cup of coffee than adding <laughs> cream or sugar to it and ruining it. But this is a great, this is a great Americano. I could sit and, and sip this. Now, I've been trying to drink it espresso style, because, you know, when in Rome, as they say. Um, but sometimes when I just want to sit and drink a long bit of coffee and do a little bit of work, the Americano works out. I know some people have already screamed as soon as they saw me put the water in. But it's good stuff. And the great thing is, because we heated up the kettle, the, the kettle before, it's all nice and warm. But uh, this whole process, the, the coffee's like perfect temperature now. Um, like it's, it's obviously been heated, but it's cooled down to such a degree just through this process that it's ready to drink. And it's good. And that's what's so interesting. Because the first few times that I tried to do this, I almost gave up. And I've read that's typical because it was just coming out gross. I was boiling it too long or I was, wasn't boil, um, leaving it on the stove enough and all that kind of stuff. I also found some good coffee uh, this all works out with. But again, you have to remember it's nice and strong. Because um, when I, <laughs> a little bit of irony is once I figured this out and I was making really good coffee, I started to have like two, three cups in the morning, I was like, mm, this is really good. But then I got a little gut rot and I was like, oh, that's, that's a lot of coffee, a lot of espresso to have. So what you want to do now is make sure that this thing is clean. Uh, and I usually do this right away. You know, it's just like cleaning your pots right away. It's just easier and things aren't stuck on and there's less chance of it. So first off, you want to cool it down because this is hot, right? So, um, some people, what they actually do is from the stove, they'll then cool it down. Um, I didn't do that in this case. So, you just want to <laughs> untighten it. But of course, it's, it's wet, so the grip is, isn't as easy. So, what I found is you really want to pay special attention to make sure to get rid of the grinds here, right? Wipe them all away, clean it out. But also maintaining the rubber seal. Now, for this, it's actually really hard, I found. <laughs> To get the the coffee part out of this filter thing so I just put two thumbs down which of course you really want to make sure that you've cooled this thing down because you stick these thumbs in and it hurts um, so this goes right in the garbage and then yeah clean it all down done look at that I messed this up a little bit so I'm really happy with myself here too because I'm, I'm obviously uh, well, well versed in this now. Um, I thought for sure as soon as I turned on the camera I would screw this up somehow, but this is, this is I, I did it. I did it quite well. That's a great cup of coffee, strong cup of coffee, and uh, you know, doing it European style. Except for, you know, the, making it an Americano. So now you know how to use a mocha machine or a mocha pot. So if you're ever in a foreign land and then all that they have is one of these crazy devices, um, that's, how you, that's how you do it. I hope everyone there is doing great. I'm doing great. Lots of fun. These days are much easier knowing you have a good cup of coffee. So, buena sera, buena notte, a domani. <laughs>